medical imaging of many different types harnesses radioactivity to take images of structures and processes in our human body. Here's a medical image of a brain taken using uh, a radioactive technique. In many medical procedures, uh, the doctor or technician will dope the patient with a radionuclide and then observe the resulting gamma rays. Let's remember emission of photons. Metabolic factors determine where a particular doping agent will end up in the human body. So for example, I have experience with this one in particular. The thyroid uptakes iodine and I have a problem with my thyroid. Um, I, I actually had an overactive thyroid which was killed by a radioactive iodine treatment. So um, because our thyroid uptakes iodine, what you can do is take iodine and you can use um, different, um, different isotopes of iodine in order to, um, to treat thyroid uh, processes or to image thyroid processes. So iodine-123 is harmless to thyroid cells and can be used for imaging. So you give someone iodine-123 and um, the thyroid will uptake the iodine and it's um, radioactive, but it's not harmful to the thyroid. And you can image the radioactive um, emission that's coming from that thyroid. But iodine-131 is an isotope of iodine that destroys thyroid cells and can be used for medical treatment. And um, when I was in my mid twenties, uh, they discovered that I had an overactive thyroid. And the only way you can treat it is by um, these radioactive iodine treatments to kill the thyroid activity or to just cut out the thyroid. They gave me a dose of iodine 131. Um, my thyroid took up that iodine, but there was enough radioactivity that uh, it, it killed those thyroid cells. And so now my thyroid function is no longer there. <laughs> um, and I have to take um, a, a, a thyroid supplement pill in order to replicate um, what my thyroid is uh, supposed to be doing within my body. So that's an example. And the cool thing is that because the thyroid takes in iodine so well that that radioactive iodine only impacted my thyroid and no other tissue in my body. Different types of radiation impact our human body differently. Alpha particles, because we saw earlier that those alpha particles are pretty easy to stop. They don't travel very far before they, um, they, they interact and are blocked. Um, alpha particles are relatively easy to stop. So they dump all of their kinetic energy into a smaller space. And when they do that, they're often doing more damage than the more energetic gamma rays that can just pass through, um, just pass through biological tissue. Here we have an example of a gamma particle going through human tissue. And um, each one of these asterisks here is a place where you're having an interaction um, between that gamma ray and the biological tissue. It doesn't happen too often here. But here we have our alpha particle that alpha particle is traveling through the human tissue. And again, the alpha particle is easy to stop. It interacts over a shorter range. It dumps this energy into a smaller space. And so you're gonna have more interactions of that alpha particle as it's traveling through the same amount of tissue. So alpha particles can actually do more damage to human tissue than gamma particles can, for example. In the medical community, they measure ionizing radiation doses in terms of the energy they deposit per kilogram. One rad, RAD, is one one hundredth of a joule of ionizing energy deposited per kilogram of tissue. So one rad is equal to 0 0.01 joules per kilogram. There's an SI unit for radiation dose, and that's called the gray. Um, abbreviated as capital GY. One gray is one joule per kilogram, and that's also equal to 100 rad. 
there's also another SI unit called the sievert, uh, capital SV, and it determines the radiation dose proportional to the effects in biological tissue. Uh, the quantity RBE is the relative biological effectiveness. So the sievert is your unit of gray times the relative biological effectiveness. Um, so it's proportional to how, um, how effective is a particular type of radiation and how effective is it going to be at impacting human tissue? That's what your RBE, the relative biological effectiveness tells you. So here are some examples of RBE, relative biological effectiveness and sievert. And uh, these are taken from your textbook here. We think about the different types of energy or radiation and you can think about their relative biological effectiveness. So X-rays, gamma rays, even, even um, beta particles, their relative biological effectiveness is pretty low. So it's less impactful when this type of radiation is, is, is in your body. It still can impact your body um, over long exposures, but it's less impactful. Um, and then as we get to protons, and, and alpha particles, you see that those relative biological effectiveness values get larger and larger. So that means that these types of interactions in the body will be more impactful. And you can, it can be more impactful in different ways. Maybe it's good that the relative biological effectiveness is high. If you want to treat somebody and to destroy cancer cells, for example, um, using a particular type of radiation. But you can also really harm somebody if they're exposed to these types of radiation for not therapeutic means, but maybe like in some sort of industrial accident. Medical physics is an entirely different branch of physics where you spend a lot of time thinking about, well, part of it is thinking about uh, the impacts of radioactivity on human functioning. But there are other parts of medical physics too, like for example, how does range of motion impact your body? Um, you could also take medical physics courses to learn about the physiology of the body and how you might um, move around in different apparatuses um, based on the forces that your body experiences, kind of thinking about physics from a biological perspective more in that way is medical physics. But one thing medical physicists can do is to spend a lot of time thinking about um, the impact of radioactivity in the industrial process, the impact of radioactivity on humans. Here we're going to think about a problem where we consider the dose of inhaled plutonium in an industrial accident. In this problem, we are going to calculate the dose someone receives by inhaling plutonium. So calculate the dose in sieverts per year. That's what we're looking for. That's our unknown. For the lungs of a weapon plant employee who inhales and retains an activity of one microcurie of plutonium-239 in an accident. So my unknown was the dose received by this person in sieverts per year. That's what I'm going to be looking for in the end. I know that the activity, which is the rate of decay of um, the plutonium received by the person, um, is one microcurie, okay? Um, CI represents the unit of curie. And we have plutonium-239. The mass of the affected lung tissue of the person is two kilograms and the plutonium decays by emission of a 5.23 mega electron volt alpha particle. And we're going to assume that the relative biological effectiveness of this alpha particle, the RBE, is 20. So with that, we've got to find the dose received by this person of radioactivity in sieverts per year. Okay. so. I kind of wrote down the three different steps we have to take in order to solve this problem. Now, right here, three, step three, is where we want to go. 
we need to find the dose in sieverts per year, okay? So let's think about this, our dose in sieverts per year. These are just the units, okay? So my unit of sievert, you can also write as the unit of, the, of gray times RBE, our relative biological effectiveness. This is the unit of sievert right here, but we have to find this per year, okay? And this entire piece right here, the grays time times RBE, this is our unit of sievert, okay? Now, our unit of gray is a joule per kilogram, so it's like an energy per mass. And so I'm going to just write my units here, joule per kilogram, that's my unit, but this is like, we're going to be looking for an energy per mass here, um, per year times the RBE. So in order to get this dose in sieverts, we have to think about what is this quantity right here, which I've written as E over M. This is going to be our ionized energy deposited per year by this alpha particle decay. And that's what needs to go right here. We already know RBE, okay? So we have to figure out what is this energy deposited per year, and we already know the mass. Now, I kind of know where I need to go, and then I need to work myself backwards a little bit. So now I have to figure out what is my ionized energy deposited per year. And then we can divide that by the mass and that will give us this term right here for our final answer. All right, so let's go back and think about this ionized energy deposited per year. So this is going to equal our number of decays of this, alpha, of this plutonium into the alpha particle, this is going to be our number of decays per year times the energy of our alpha particle over, or per decay. So times the energy of our alpha particle per decay. Okay, so we already know what is the energy of our alpha particle per decay, and that was our 5.23 mega electron volts. So we already know what this term is right here. Now we have to figure out what is the number of decays per year for this radioactivity, okay? So we have to figure out what is this term right here. And so that's this next step up here. In order to find our number of decays per year, we have to think about our rate of decay, which in nuclear physics, sometimes we talk about that rate of decay as the activity R. Okay, so our activity, this rate of decay, is one microcurie, okay? So one microcurie, that's the same thing as one times 10 to the minus six Curie, micro is 10 to the minus six. We know that one Becquerel, the unit for Becquerel, one Becquerel is the same thing as a decay per second. So I'm going to take my Curie unit and convert it to Becquerel because I know that Becquerels are the same thing as decays per second. So um, for one Curie, one Curie is the same thing as 3.7 times 10 to the 10 Becquerels. Okay, so my units of Curie cancel here, and I take 1 times 10 to the minus 6 times 3.7 times 10 to the 10 Becquerels. This equals 3.7 times 10 to the 4 Becquerel. And we said that one Becquerel, so DK, same as one DK per second. So this is equal to 3.7 times 10 to the four 
decays per second. Okay, but in order to find my ionized energy deposited per year, I have to take the number of decays per second and convert it into the number of decays per year. Okay, so we just have to do one pretty large conversion factor in order to go from decays per second to decays per year. I'm gonna do that here in a different color. Let's do it right in here. If we have 3.7 times 10 to the four decays per second, Okay, I wanna go from seconds to years. In one hour, there's 3,600 seconds. Okay, so we got that because there are 60 seconds in one minute, there are 60 minutes in one hour. So my seconds cancel here and here. And I know that there's 24 hours in one day. Okay, that takes care of that. And then how many days are there in a year? There's 365.24 days in a year. So we'll multiply this by 365.24 days per year. Okay, and then that gives me, let's see. Um, so uh, let's see, the days cancel here and here. Okay, so if I take 3.7 times 10 to the four, multiply it by 3,600, multiply by 24, multiply by 365.24, that gives me my decay, number of decays per year, which is going to be 1.17 times 10 to the 12 decays per year. So this right here, I'm gonna put a little box around it, is my number of decays per year, which has to feed into my ionized energy deposited per year. So my ionized energy deposited per year by this um, radioactive process will equal our number of decays per year, which we just found, times the energy of the alpha particle per decay. All right, this is equal to one point one seven times 10 to the 12 decay C-A-Y per year. And then I'm gonna multiply it by the energy of my alpha particle, 5.23 mega electron volts, which is 5.23 times 10 to the six electron volts. And then oops, EV, and then I'm gonna divide that by, so that, that's our energy um, energy per, uh, per alpha particle, okay? Energy per alpha particle decay. So these kind of units, these decays cancel here, here. So we're left with units of electron volts per year for the energy. So remember, an electron volt is a very, 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 very tiny percentage of a joule. So we can change this electron volt into units of joules. So instead of getting electron volts per year, we're going to get joules per year. Okay. So if I think about this right here, this is equal to, I'm going to rewrite it right here, 1.17 times 10 to the 12 over a year times 5.23 times 10 to the 6 electron volts to say over one. And then I have to convert this energy from electron volts to joules. And I know that one electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules, okay? So my electron volts are going to cancel. Then I'm going to get the ionized energy deposited per year in units of joules per year. And so I'll have to take 1.17 times 10 to the 12 times 5.23 times 10 to the six times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. And this gives me 0 
nine eight joules per year. Okay, that's my energy deposited per year, and I'm going to put a little box around it because this quantity is going to feed in to our final calculation for the dose received by this person in sieverts per year. Okay, so this joules per year is going to come over here. It's going to feed into this calculation. When we're calculating our dose in units of sieverts per year, we broke apart our unit of gray. The sievert is a gray times the RBE, the relative biological effectiveness. So the gray has units of joule per kilogram or an energy per mass. We've got this energy per year. So this will be equal to my 0 0.98 joules per year. Okay, now this is going to be our calculation of the energy deposited per year. And then I'm going to divide it by, we've got to have a mass in here, so I'm going to divide it by this two kilogram mass of the lungs that this plutonium is impacting. So I'm going to divide this by 2.0 kilograms, because remember our gray is units of joules per kilogram and energy per mass, so I had to get the mass in here. And now I'm going to multiply this by my, um, my RBE, okay? So then this is going to equal, I've got 0.98 divided by 2, and that's going to be 0 0.49, okay? And then we've got a joule per kilogram per year, essentially. So we're going to call this 0.49 joules per kilogram, which is our gray, and then per year. And then we're going to multiply it by 20, okay? So whenever we do this, we've got our unit here of gray. We've got our 0.49 grays per year, and then we're going to multiply it by the RBE. And doing this will give me my answer in units of sieverts per year. So the sieverts per year of the dose received by this person after they've inhaled this plutonium is 9.8 sieverts per year. In order to get this, there's not a whole lot of complicated math, but there's kind of a lot of conversion factors that go into this. So in order to calculate the dose received by this person in sieverts per year, we had to think about, okay, how exactly do I get units of sieverts? You've got to get units of grays multiplied by our RBE. A gray is a unit of an energy per mass. Uh, and then we also have to think about how much this person receives in the year. So we have to figure out what is the ionized energy deposited per year by this uh, radioactive process. And we did that in this step right here. We got our answer. We needed to get our answer in joules per year. And in order to do this, we had to think about our number of decays of this radioactive process per year, okay, which we got from our activity quantity. And then we also had to think about the energy of the alpha particle whenever our plutonium decays. So a lot of things, um, all combining many different aspects of nuclear physics that went into calculating this process. And this is something that people who are, are um, medical physicists are going to be calculating all of the time for industry.